Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Nation News, and we have April trashing Gary, Gary Turner. That's right. She shares her opinions after dating Gary on this season of The Golden Bachelor, all on the Vile Files podcast. I've got three separate clips I'm going to share with you regarding what she had to say. It's fun. It's nice to hear someone share their opinions. My guess is she might be a little scorned, uh, but maybe he just wasn't her type. Have a listen. No that Gary was The Bachelor by the time you said yes to going on the show? No, I had said yes. And then I saw him on ABC in the morning show. And um, I had a lot of mixed emotions. Tell us. Those? Yeah. Yeah, please. Well, yeah. I kind of am a different person than uh, Gary. <laughs> I really don't like muddy ponds. <laughs> Indiana's not my thing. All oh, right, like so we have a we have a coastal elitist from Florida here. April does not like muddy ponds. Like, I don't disagree. I'm not one for fresh water myself. I'm more of a salt of the earth kind of kind of guy. Literally, I thought that was Literally. like a metaphor for like <laughs> Literally muddy Gary pond. is you a know, muddy Gary's pond. baggage or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really kind of was, you know. I'm not from money, um, for sure, but I do have a different lifestyle and I love it. And I live in South Florida and I'm willing to share that with anybody that I fall madly in love with. But is April the Cruella DeVille of this cast? Now, look, I like her uh, in her sense of humor. I like all of that. But also it's I mean, look, she's got this marble bust with the florals coming out of the background. She kind of is giving me uh, queen villain energy. No, I could see that this was going to be a real challenge, putting that nicely. What was your first impression of Gary once meeting him? Were you pleasantly surprised or was it kind of what you expected? No, I was pleasantly surprised on how good looking he was and how well kept he was. He looked much better in real life than he did on TV. Um, I don't know if it was the suntan or <laughs> the beautiful clothes or the atmosphere. He has beautiful blue eyes that are dazzling. And of course, he was his charming self as much as he could be. He is not a player. I am a player. What, what do you mean by that, April? If I can't play in love and I can't have fun with someone and tease and joke and, and so i think she has the wrong uh idea of what a player is a player is someone who dates around uh you know in one way or another but she's saying she wants to tease and have fun and maybe gary was too serious for her you know or maybe it was the format of the show was too serious or maybe she's just not that funny joy he didn't i don't think he kind of got my jokes i just think it was like oh okay <laughs> do you think gary is a little was a little too serious for you when I asked him his favorite song and he said Dean Martin and mine is Harry Styles. Um, <laughs> we agree you know, with and, you. And yeah. I, yeah. And I wanted to go to see um, Taylor Swift at a concert. Um, I, you know, that there is, there seemed to be an age difference, even though there isn't. So I think. Age April, I think that's just the Botox speaking, but no, I understand the point here. They're just, they have different, you know, different likes and desires. So all, all fun folks. Age is a mental state. If I'm hearing you correctly, whatever, I don't even know your age, but you're, you live young and it felt like right. maybe for you, Gary lived a little older. Yeah, I, I even if I don't live young, I like to think I live young. All right, okay, so there it is. You know, and Nick's like, I know, I get it. I'm 42. I do TikTok dances. I understand. Uh, trust me. All right, so let's get into the next part. 3715. Here we have two more clips to share with you all. Affected her so much. Uh, I was told similar things from Teresa. It didn't seem to bother me, or maybe it was because I really was not feeling the connection to Gary. So I didn't care what happened. I was like. <laughs> She's saying she didn't get involved in the beef because she had no investment. She's like, I just didn't care about him. I'm here to have a good time. I mean, I, you know, I'm here to, to try. If it works, it works. If there's not, you know, phone will ring the next minute. Yeah, Gary oh, clearly well. wasn't your guy. That's okay, right? Not everyone's everyone's person. No disrespect oh, I, to Gary. I'm glad he's not my guy. 
Do I don't look like I belong on a wedding cake with him. <laughs> no. She says, don't. I don't belong on a wedding cake with him. She's really condescending. <clears throat> but I understand uh, her opinion here. Now, but what's interesting is she's like, make, she says, like, I'm the young one. I like Harry Styles. But then again, she wrote a tell-all book about when falling in love with Frankie Valli as a little girl. Now, we've already made a story about it. It's quite tragic. It probably, in today's t- world, would be considered grooming because he met her when she was like a child and then ended up dating her and she was like his groupie. It's an interesting story, but she says, Frankie Valley took me at 16 and used me in decades long love affair. I mean, we've already covered this again. I'm not trying to get too deep into the story. It's pretty fascinating stuff here, folks. Uh, but either way, to, to, to pretend like you're a spring chicken when your whole love story is dating a guy uh, or uh, uh, dating might be the wrong word here because he was grooming from the four seasons. Excuse me, seasons. Holy hell here. Oh my gosh, I need to swallow my tongue. All right. Oh, let's just keep no. going. I got to find my guy. Yeah, I'll know it. I'll know it. I mean, I know I fall in love right away. And there, there's certain things that I, you know, attach to somebody. And I then I go. Now, had he... And by the way, I do want to say, I'm not, I'm not trying to victim blame her. I already made a video where I talked about how jaw-droppingly cultural shifts have happened, where we look at something like that, where she meets someone who, when she's clearly a child, and, that, and we see that you don't have your faculties and whereabouts and all that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm just making the comparison that when she says she loves like young uh, hip hop, maybe maybe uh, she's unfairly aging uh, Gary Turner here. When you know the the Four Seasons was uh, you know in the CD player. Okay, been somebody like that, like my when I lose all my brains and I don't know, and everything I've ever learned in my life goes out the window. I would have been a maniac. I would have been ripping <laughs> off my panties and like Woo! like running April. And da- I, I would have been pushing people away, knocking them over. All right. So April says, if the conditions were right, I would have been ripping off my panties and running towards him. But she just wasn't that into Gary. Uh, and then let's go to, and again, is this April's bid for Golden Bachelorette? I don't know if she's got, I mean, Again, I can't tell from this interview if she's likable enough, but you do want to cheer on your Golden Bachelorette. And I am getting a little air of superiority over, her. you know, she's, you know, I think the audience prefers the Midwestern Gary Turner over someone who's like, I have a, you know, expensive taste buds is, is kind of the uh, the summary I'm getting from it. Ladies, fell in love with Gary. He's, you know, uh, as someone who's been in his shoes before as the bachelor it's a very difficult thing to do what he's doing i understand that and he's he what he has been so good just from a viewer standpoint seems to be he's present he's seems to be good at being empathetic he's really always on in a great way especially for the bachelor yeah i saw gary very differently um i knew a little bit about his personal history which i will not share but I always, I always what, in the back of what do you things mean? I would call him the peacock. What, what do you mean, April? So she says, I knew a little bit about his personal history, which I don't want to share, which again is like, hello. Now, don't forget Nick Vial's podcast shared unvetted rumors about Gary Turner uh, and then had apologized the next episode after receiving immense backlash uh, because those rumors were not vetted or corroborated in any way whatsoever. They were just random rumors from the Internet. And um, now now we're fishing for what April... And again, I don't blame Nick. You know, it's like, let April continue to dig her hole here. I mean, I know you don't want to share, but like, where did you hear about this personal history? About his, he told me about his family life, oh. and it was very similar to mine. And also, he's a Leo. Um, I study astrology a little bit. I didn't have the date, or I would have done more on him at the time. I'm not doing it now, because I don't... She goes, she, April goes, I, I do astrology and he's a Leo and I didn't have all the data. Can you imagine date one? She's like, hey, Gary, what time of the day were you born? Gary's like, I don't know. I'm 72. Let me go ask my mom. Like, what do you mean? What time of day was I born? She's like, well, I just want to piece together a few things. You know, you're over here from Indiana. You're a Le- rising vertigo or whatever the hell he is. Um, but either way, we quickly shuffle over what she says is the, the, the dirt she 
she has on Gary? I don't understand that. And then she said he had a similar upbringing, which again, I don't know. Did he also get groomed by, um, you know, you know, uh, 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 the Four Seasons guy? I don't know. I don't know what she's getting at. Uh, and maybe we won't know, but I'm sure whatever it is that Gary wanted to share with her, it wasn't information that uh, one would deem to be uh, super private because I'm, I'm assuming they only shared information with each other that would have appeared on the show. I don't think there was any private time. I want to spend my time on that, but I saw him as someone very different, and, and, but I think he was well-groomed for what he did. I think he was the perfect gentleman I think he endured as much as he could. I think it got hard for him to stay calm sometimes and um, keep his cool, keep his wits about him. I just sensed that. Now, did I did see anything? No. Um, there were times when Gary and I talked and, and he just seemed to look right past me. And as a counselor, I'll tell you, the meanest thing you can ever do to any human being is ignore them. And ostracizing, yeah, sure, I, I could imagine that. But uh, what she's not doing is giving Gary any empathy for being on a TV show. I mean, he's dating a dozen women at a time. So while she's taking offense to the fact that he wasn't giving her his full attention, maybe she was out running the clock. Maybe there was another lady behind her waiting. Maybe there was a producer there ready to break them for lunch. I mean, there's so many factors that go into this that you can't just go off of what your normal hunch would be. I mean, she would understand this as a as a therapist, right? And um, that did get, that hurt my heart. I mean, tell me you don't like me. Tell, tell me I'm a biatch. Tell me I'm naive, I'm sweet, whatever. Tell me anything, but don't ignore me. Preach. And when someone looks, looks through my being and my soul and my heart, it really gave me the intention that I had to set to be courageous and keep moving forward and looking for love. Now, look, I just don't know what she cares because she said she didn't really like him in the first place. But I understand she's obviously on the side of it where she might be defensive. So, look, again, no one, uh, you know, no one. I've never been on the show. I've never been on Golden Bachelor. I've never dated after tragedy like they have. And I can only imagine we have to remember to give April the kind of grace we give Gary. So let's root them all on. But at the same time, if I were to share my opinion, which is probably why people come to this channel, I would say that my opinion is, is that she's a little jaded because he's the one getting all the attention and she feels like she should be the star of the show. That's my opinion. That's just what I think. I don't blame her for it. You know what I mean? And by the way, can I get one of those bustiers? Is that a bustier? No, that's a bust. What is a bustier a bra? Can I get one of those marble statues made of my own head? Can we get one of those for my own office and I can put some plants on top of it? That's like a rich person's chia pet right there. All right, that's going to do it for me. I'll be on Bachelor Rush Hour, the afternoon podcast. If you are one of the few people who didn't catch my interview with Caitlin Bristol, it is skyrocketed to be the most successful interview we've ever done on Driving with Dave. You can go check that out right now. And more content coming your way right after this.